Welcome back to another episode of Dirt to Dust presented by Outlaw Off Road. We've got another Friday mailbag edition for you, and we're going to keep this one really fun. I've got my boy Ryan McCutcheon here with me. Uh, Ryan owns the Outlaw Off Road Atlanta location. So it's about time that we have a store owner on the podcast with us. I'm super excited. Ryan, are you super excited? Sure. Yeah. No, I'm excited, <laughs> man. I'm excited. <laughs> it's going to be fun. All right. Well, we'll get it right into this. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to to Dust. Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. All right, and welcome back. Like I said, we've got a pretty awesome topic today. Uh, Ryan, I I was checking through our um, analytics and YouTube and Google will like to recommend some things to us. Now, normally I like to go to different uh, Facebook groups or we respond to messages or we look into the system of see what like store owners are getting messages and, and questions. Um, but a, a pretty fun one actually popped up on the the recommendation that I guess is typed into YouTube quite often is what is the best off-road cheap daily driver? Yeah. So that's what I really want to get into on this one. For and sure. um, So first things first, though, I think we have to kind of define what cheap is <laughs> yeah i mean there's i feel like there's different tiers of of cheap considering what you're like willing to spend i guess so right that's, that's kind of where i'm at I, that's where my list that's where my list is at yeah <laughs> uh, I, my my list is sub ten thousand dollars i i consider that a cheap daily driver anything sure. yeah Anything under five thousand, I mean, it's it's a daily, but yeah, is it really? <laughs> is You're it probably going to spend more time working on it than you are driving it. Um, so True. I think sub ten thousand is a cheap daily um, that can definitely be doable. So um, let's start from the bottom and go to the top. So okay. Let's start with let's start with your number three. I'm I'm kind of curious to hear what your number three is. So, <laughs> Your number three, sir, hit me. My number three is probably going to be the WJ Grand Cherokee. Ooh, okay. All right. Yeah. I like me a WJ. I've owned three of them, actually. Yeah. <laughs> in, all, in all states, I've had I've had a completely stock one. I've had a 4.0 with like a mild, like two and a half inch lift. And then I've had yeah. the 4.7 uh with some like 33 ko2s like the typical 2000 and like yeah 10, 2011 2012 era of building wj hey but it, it's not a wj unless you hear the squeak from the uh the lock <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know what i'm talking Def- about i know exactly what you're talking about uh yeah and just like any young kid building his first wj it had a rough country <laughs> suspension and for probably, sure I mean, definitely use tires. Definitely use always tires. use not- tires. <laughs> always, always DOT approved drag slips, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, half chopped, half worn. That's oh, pretty yeah. funny. Uh, so why, why WJ? What draws you to the WJ? I mean, they're for me. I think they're pretty capable. You know, kind of out of the box. I mean, you've got um, the rear suspension, how it's got the triangle set up. You know, in the mm-hmm. upper upper section, and it's really cool because we did one. A while back, and granted, the the lift wasn't budget, but you know we did the Iron Rock um, Rock Link. Uh, yeah, what is it? Yeah, the Iron Rock Lock, uh, Rock mm-hmm. Link, and you know it basically turned it into a triangulated three link in the or, yeah uh, three link in the yeah, rear for sure. Or four, they, four, excuse me, excuse yeah. me. Yeah, there's four arms, <laughs> um, but it was really cool, and, and it, it it was really nice to have the different uh, cross members that just set it all up and mm-hmm. no guesswork and. But I mean, still, like I said, out of the box with, like you said, like a two, three inch lip, they're pretty capable. They're a little bit on the big side. So if you're trying to hit tight trails, expect some body damage. But I mean, if you don't care about it, who cares? Yeah. And um, I'm pretty sure those came with like a Dana 44 in the rear, didn't they? A Dana 44A. So they're not as okay. strong. Yeah. So 
That is the only drawback, I think, of those. And that that was only usually come into like the limited to so the all wheel drive models. Mm-hmm. Um, or that, or you got to get the good old sturdy 35, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't break anything in any of my WJs. Uh, but then again, I didn't really wheel it hard enough to break anything. Right. I mean, it, they're um, good if, like I said, if you're moderately wheeling or anything, you're mm-hmm. not beating the crap out of it. I mean, it, it's mm-hmm. going to hold up. So. Right. And I didn't I didn't grab mine to, to build it, to be honest with you. I, I was in college at the time. I needed a vehicle that could get through the snow, the mountains of North Carolina um, and then have some fun on some just like little podunk, like just mountain trails, yeah, logging yeah, roads, stuff sure. like that. I wasn't like wheeling, wheeling. Um, I didn't really do that until I got my first TJ, um, which another story. Unfortunately, TJ is not on the list because no, I, I, I did I did a check on, on Facebook Marketplace and. And man, find, the, the, uh, the prices of those things are freaking going nuts for some reason. Absolutely, yeah. And dude, even YJs, I could, I could only find yes. a couple of sub $10,000 YJs. Yeah, I, I, I was floored when I saw the prices of YJs, how mm-hmm. vastly they've gone up. Yeah. I wouldn't call a YJ or even really an early TJ a daily driver anyways. Um, nah. It, it's not going to be a comfortable daily driver personally. No. I've been there. Didn't enjoy it. <laughs> There's a reason why, <laughs> yeah, a reason why the LJ isn't a daily driver anymore either. Yeah, no, it was, so you know. <laughs> I had an 05 Rubicon that, that I had and everything. And it was, when I was young, it was fine. And then once mm-hmm. I got stuff a lot more comfortable, I was like, why have I been driving this? <laughs> what have I been doing? <laughs> right. Well, so my number three uh, is <laughs> kind of also a Grand Cherokee. Uh, 2005 to 2010 WK, WK. Grand Cherokee. All right. Or, All right. or here's my caveat. Or Commander, either one with the five seven mm, Hemi. Yeah, I did it, not like. I didn't like the four seven uh, in my Grand Cherokee. It, no, it, it had a lot of issues. But um, I had a buddy who had a five seven Grand Cherokee, and the dude drove the living piss out of the thing, and it kept going. Um, mm-hmm. It was very comfortable. Um, and I just a quick look on Marketplace on Facebook, and I found a ton of 05 to 010 limiteds with the 57 hemi with a sunroof with leather like actually, oh yeah like they didn't look beat on either it looked decent um and with a mild lift and like some i would say like some jail rubicon or jk rubicon wheels and tires, yeah those look good on there it looked good and the same yeah, they look the so good. um there's a white commander with the 57 in it I want to say it's a limited or overland edition. It's uh, maybe two and a half, three inches of lift with jail Rubicon wheels and tires. Yeah, that's fun. Let me tell you, it looks awesome. They look really good. I really think that, you know, those are kind of underrated. You know, don't get the three, seven or four, seven, just get one with Mm -hmm. a Hemi and be done with it. But I mean, for Mm -hmm. what the value that you get out of the commander is actually pretty nice. I dig it. And tow rating is pretty good. Um, yeah. You know, they're comfortable. Some of them even have a third row, which I don't, yeah. I don't need. But for a comfortability of a daily driver and still being able to have like an overlandy vehicle. Um, yeah. And so uh, you've got a big family. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So hit me with your number two then. <laughs> well, I'm kind of on the same thing. But uh, on the JDM side, we're going to go with a first gen Sequoia. Ooh. Okay. Man, because you, you can find those things a dime a dozen cheap and i mean yeah. cheap yeah and i mean yeah they're gonna have a lot of miles on them what toyota doesn't but i mean the, the <laughs> right. aftermarket supports there for them and mm-hmm. i mean they're really capable they really are i mean they're they're big they're big but like for me putting that on this list was like kind of like what i mentioned earlier with the commander like someone that has like a big family like family of four and a dog mm-hmm. or family of three and you know they all want to go out and you know explore and everything. And I, I think that's the perfect platform. I I'm I'm with you on that actually. Um, I've I've always liked the Sequoias. Um, I just think they look and, so cool when you put ARB bumpers front and rear on. Yeah, you start really getting into it. Yeah. Like God, they look yeah. good. They look good. Um, which I'm, I'm really glad you didn't say <laughs> an early generation forerunner because um, that's that is my <laughs> that is my number two. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm not going to go uh, first or second gen or even third gen forerunner. I'm going to go fourth gen yeah. 2003 to 2009 yep. forerunner. Um, that was not that, that, that particular generation just did not do well. You see a ton of them on the road. No, uh-uh. just did not do well at all. So third gens are taking back off again. There's like a cool revival of third gen forerunners. So those are getting expensive again, but fourth yep. gens, I think they're the ugly duckling, but I think it's also what, the newest generation forerunner is almost kind of based off of that's what it that's yeah. the design feel that I get from it. But fourth gen, 
mostly because it came with a V8 option. It's got, uh, I want to say it might be a 4.6 or 4.7 uh, as four, well. Seven. Four, um, seven. But that 4.7 V8 is way better than the Jeep 4.7 V8 yes. uh, for one. And for sure. um, again, another very comfortable, capable yep. vehicle that you wouldn't expect to do a whole lot off-road, but I've seen them do some pretty cool things. Yeah. Um, there's a guy on Instagram, and I cannot feel stellar built. I want to say I'm on, I I would check, but I'm going to have to cut this off to check. <laughs> right. uh, stellar built. Um, I want to think is is the Instagram uh, handle, and he builds some badass fourth gen forerunners. And there's one that went on 38s or 40s recently, and I'm uh, like solid axle swapped and everything. I thought that was badass, but that's not very cheap. But in its no. base <laughs> form, I would say you know 32s, 33s. Something yeah. comfortable, um, definitely an overland capable vehicle, definitely yep. something I would take light trail riding. And obviously any of these, if we're talking daily driver, I'm not going to wheel heavily. with it. Right. I think I should make that statement right up front. These yeah. are not heavy wheeling vehicles. These are truly daily drivers that's going to get you across the country or get you to mom's, yep. mom's house and back. Yep. Uh, something you're going to have to go get groceries and pick the kids up and like but also have a little bit of fun on the weekends. So and especially it being Toyota, I hate, I know you, we all hate this to say and hear it, but I mean, they last forever. I mean, they last forever. Uh, Doug and I were just talking about the newest generation, uh, forerunner. Right. And we did a podcast episode on that. And that was one of my big things about Toyota in general. Like when you buy a Toyota, you know, yep. you're getting a good engine. Like Toyota doesn't yeah. make a bad engine. There was only um, one bad engine that they ever made, but that's neither here nor there. And that was years ago. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's not in anything that we're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, that's I like the only thing I can think of that. is like that Toyota's ever done wrong was that. Mm. And like everything they've always done right. And they just, like I said, when you find one that's going to have some miles on it, but as long as the oil's been changed, you're good. <laughs> you're solid. Even then you might not even have to change the oil. Probably not. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, fourth. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, third. No, it is fourth gen. My bad. Fourth gen Toyota Four Runner is my my number two. I think I know what your number one is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what your number one is too, bud. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> Go ahead and hit me with that 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 number one pick. The number one pick I'm gonna I'm gonna say is the uh, 04 to 2010 Cayenne. I, I'm going to 100% agree with you. I and, wasn't on board. I was not on board. <laughs> not a lot of people are. Uh, it's, it's, it's coming around. It is it's coming, coming around, around, man. It is coming around. Uh, I want you to explain why you love the 04 to 2010 Porsche Cayenne Turbo so much. So um, I do have one personally, I will say. It's kind of a biased thing, but um, <laughs> what, I, what I really like about it is how comfortable it is. It's got plenty of power. Um, and it's just, for me, it's something different that not a mm-hmm. whole lot of people were, you know, have been doing, um, they're starting to, it's starting to, it's starting to get out there a little bit, which is good. Uh, cause that means a lot of more aftermarket supports coming out for them where, you know, about four years ago, there was hardly any, and it was just kind of like, see what you can do to make it work to now you've got, you know, Euro wise, they do all kinds of stuff for the Cayennes and it's not just Cayenne. So like if you find a Touareg. That's the same thing, or an Audi Q7. They're all the same platform. They are all the, everything underneath is all the same. Mm-hmm. Um, and the cool thing about the Touareg and the Audi is that you can get a TDI, so you can Very get true. a diesel. But yeah, um, but what's we're well, getting back to the 04 to to 10 Cayennes um, around 04 to 06. You kind of want to stay around um, the the V6 marks of those, the mm-hmm. 32s. Uh, you don't typically have a whole lot of issues. They're just a, this is a VR six. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, uh, 456 gears out of the box on the V six models. And which really? I think, yeah, which I think is really wow. cool. Um, you, you can get the four or five, like in the Cayenne S the, the early, the early V eights. But the thing you got to worry about with those is the bore scoring. Uh, that's mm-hmm. very common in those. So when you start seeing it eat oil, it's, it's the, the, I wouldn't say the engine's on its way out, but just keep putting mm-hmm. oil in it. Um, but you know, in the nine, five, seven or the Oh eight to 10, um, the four, eight is, is where it's at plenty of power and they sound really cool. <laughs> I mean, um, yours, yours definitely sounds pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say, you know, the turbo it's kind of get you're getting out of the price range on that. And plus, 
Um, I've got a few friends with some turbos, and their their biggest complaint is actually in four low, doing some technical stuff, and you're just trying to to inch over something, the turbo lag. So okay, yeah. the turbos will kick in when you don't want them to, and it's kind of like forcing you up a little bit mm-hmm. faster than you want it you want it to do. So that was gotcha. the one complaint about the turbos. But like, if you stick around the V6 marks, still the V6 has plenty of power, especially in the 957, which is the again the 08 to to 10. That's actually got the 36, so you get a little bit more power there, and you can get it tuned and stuff like that. You know. Okay. So, but the uh, that 48 though has something else a little I, I wasn't aware of until you told me this like two weeks ago um what uh what's the tow capacity on that thing <laughs> <laughs> about eight thousand pounds jesus Christ. yep i um i've towed a players ranger with it with the u-haul trailer and then the recent uh addition to my fleet the m5 um and you know what's crazy about that is i i Pulling, pulling the Ranger wasn't anything. The only thing that kind of sucked because it was, you know, it's got the aerodynamic of a freaking brick. So I could feel the wind pulling me back a little bit with the car. It was a little different. It was a little different um, because it pulled differently and it wasn't, it wasn't as laggy as I thought. Like going up hills, like it would maintain 80 miles an hour, no problem. The only thing for mine is mine had air suspension. I took it out. I don't have sport mode anymore, which would hold mm-hmm. the gear longer. But, mm-hmm. I mean, I've got the Tiptronic on the on the steering wheel, just downship, cruise right up. I mean, it no issues, never got never got past 180 degrees. Like, it was it blew my mind, honestly, because I was nervous. I was like, man, I don't know how, how this is going to pull, you know, a 4,000-pound car back <laughs> right. with, a, with a U-Haul trailer. But, I mean, man, yeah. it, it, it did it. it. Dude, that's awesome. Comfortably. That's Comfortably. awesome. I think if I ever got rid of my current Grand Cherokee, which is on a cheap daily driver, but I mean, it's a good daily driver. It's a good so daily, though. I've got a 20, 2020 Grand Cherokee Limited. I love it. Um, but if I ever decided to ditch a car payment again and get something that I could just have fun and rip around with, I, pro- I would be really hard-pressed not to find, yeah. you know, I mean, 708, 48, kind yeah. of. For sure. Comfortable too. Super. I mean, it's a Porsche. So like, yeah. a, a, you know, an early model Porsche still had a lot of features and, and things in it that even it took, you know, most base model cars to get up to you know, 2015, yeah. 2016 yep. uh, to having that heated seats, big, big touch screen. Um, yeah. And, but those things have, um, have something else that I thought was really cool. I wasn't aware of that until you told me, but they have four low. So right? yeah, so the nine uh, nine five five, the early Cayennes, and my my generation, which is the facelift generation, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, they do have four low. When you get to the nine five eight, then you lose four low, um, which is it just depends like how like how heavy are you going to wheel it or do anything with it? Or are you going to mm-hmm. be in a situation where you think you're going to need four low? And I think me and you had that conversation with, we did. If, mm-hmm. if, if, if you're going to do it, I would, I would rather, rather have four low, know that I need it than, you know, than not have it and need it. Yeah. That's the same situation that I would, I would rather be in. Um, I think if the only thing that I would add, if, if possible, I don't even know if they, someone even makes one. I think what would complete that and solidify that is forever my choice as a, as a cheap daily driver for the off-road community is if they came with a rear locker. So funny you mentioned Uh-oh. that. Yeah. <laughs> so there's some model yeah, four eggs and some turbo models do have a rear locking diff. Really? Yep. Uh, Eaton tried to come out with the uh, a front locker option to put mm-hmm. in these. Uh, we actually had one at the shop, but they just they're they're so expensive that they weren't mm-hmm. selling, so they don't make them anymore. So if you find one, that's really hard to find. The only the only caveat about doing the the front uh, locker, well, even the rear, if it didn't come equipped, is you got to coat it in, or it's going to mess with the ABS system. And, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so it's when you get into stuff like that, you you start getting into you know coding and stuff like that in these German cars. It's it's they're super weird, man. They're so weird. Yeah, it's so different. That's something I probably really wouldn't want to mess with too much. But yeah. if it's, uh, I mean, if, if there's a write up online and something simple to do it, then hell yeah, yeah sign me up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah, you, there's a guy locally that, that can that can code that thing in for you, no problem. So like, it the rear at least, the front's still kind of kind of on the frontier spectrum, but I just don't think that one's going to happen. 
Yeah, for sure. Well, dude, I appreciate you. Uh, well, let me hear your. Well, go ahead. Sorry. Don't you? Do you have a number one? Was that your number one? That was my number one. Okay. As well. <laughs> Sorry, I was about to jump the gun there and close this out. No, that was definitely my number one as well. Um, I, I, and it what wouldn't have been my number one until I saw yours and and sat in it and uh, yeah, was, yeah, it was floored. It sounded great, mm-hmm. looked great, super comfortable, and then the tow capacity plus the ability to have That's four low blow, and now blow blowing my mind here with a freaking. There's an option for a locker. Yep. Um, yeah. So. If you're if you're listening to this, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, don't everyone go out and buy a Cayenne. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't force those damn prices through the roof. But some of you, if you're in the market for a great affordable daily driver that can also be a beast off road, uh, do that. Check out Eurowise for some of the stuff they have suspensions, and then obviously check out Off Outlaw Off Road because we can install those as well. Yep. Um, and yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's all I got for today, my man. Man, that's it. That's it. <laughs> no, right, we uh, this is a Friday mailbag, so we try to keep the the mailbag episodes a nah, little bit shorter. Nah. I think we're we're right on time here. Yeah. But speaking of everybody listening, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we love doing these mailbag episodes. If you've got a question for us, or if you've got something you would love to have answered on the podcast, shoot us a message, drop us a comment below. Uh, we are on. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. Um, I was going to say Google Play. Uh, Google Play got bought out, and now that is now YouTube Podcast. So that's already oh, on here. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, if you haven't already, subscribe, drop us a like, give us a thumbs up. It's absolutely free. Helps us out a ton uh, to get this podcast out to the listening ears and where we would love to have it uh, for all things off road and overlandy and date now daily driver. <laughs> 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 podcast uh like i said my name is caleb forbes we got ryan mccutcheon here with us as well uh sorry doug couldn't be here this weekend doug is if you uh tuned into the last episode doug is at an ultra four race and he is probably strapped into a race seat right now about ready to send it uh for some practice laps so oh, yeah. doug and i will be back on next week uh we'll be back next wednesday with a long episode and like i said thank you guys for listening so much and we will catch you on the next one you've been listening to the dirt to dust Presented by Outlaw Off-Road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers... Hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.